dead serious okay. about it. Hey, <laughs> Facebook Live. Yay, hallelujah. Okay, bear with me, guys. I just got to share this in a couple of groups. Thank you for joining, and we're going to wait for some people to come on here. Hallelujah. <laughs> bear with me, and the angle here is crazy, but just bear with us. We love you guys. Bear with us for some moments. Guys, we're going to pray tonight. We'll worship the Lord a little bit. We'll pray and go over a couple of scriptures with you guys. Hallelujah. If any of you guys feel weak in the Lord, the flesh is rising up. If there's trials in your life, remember the Lord Jesus Christ conquered the world first. So in him, in the throne of grace, we could approach boldly. Yes. Because of what he did, we could overcome the world because he overcame it already. And any trials that you are having in your life are temporary, just like this life itself is temporal. But yes. the things of the Spirit and the Lord Jesus are eternal. Hallelujah. So fear not. He has not given us a spirit of fear, but a power, love, love and a sound mind. Amen. Praise you, Lord. We Hallelujah. welcome your presence. We thank you, Jesus, for the working of your grace and the faith of God in operating in our lives. Give us strength we need to endure and to continue walking in the narrow way, Lord. We thank you, you're drawing souls from the north, from the south, from the east, and from the west. And from the west. In Jesus' name, and we give you praise, Lord. In Jesus' name. Father, let the angels oh, of the four yeah. winds. Sorry, guys, really. Lo, the souls bear to watch me. this video that need this video and that need the encouragement. Hallelujah. Yes. Bear with me, guys. It, it's it's okay. It's not the most professional, but we don't claim to be. So. It's all good. <laughs> it's we're good. Not, it's good. We're it's, not professional either. We work for the Lord Jesus. Amen. Can I get a Amen. Amen. Just leave. Can you I'll, leave the thing? I'll leave it. I'll leave it. Sure. The phone's hanging on like by to, a thread. I like to wave to people. She doesn't like that too much, but I like to wave to people. We'll wave to like hello. this. All right. We're all waving to you. Don't you don't be up, discouraged. It's taped up. It's taped. So like. Don't be discouraged it, if you don't get a wave on the chat. We're gonna wave to you and yeah. say peace and blessings and greetings in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. So tonight was a blessed night. We went to church and it was a blessed service. And Pastor Dan, shout out to Pastor Dan Hollihan, blessings. Yes. Um, he spoke about the prophet Daniel and about the times we are living in and about the rise of the Antichrist and the birth pains of the church, which we're experiencing right now. We are in the birth pains. And if a woman, when, if you know, if a woman is pregnant and she is due, she's on her ninth, ninth month and she gets these contractions and pains and it's a big trial for her it's it's something grievous that's come upon her before she gives birth and that's what this earth is experiencing now it's the birth pains it's a grievous time it's a testing it's a trial it's 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 painful to watch what is going on around us and if any of you guys have a I'm sure we all go through trials, but if any of you guys have something that has been so hard to overcome lately that you just can't seem to get over, you just can't seem to get over the top of, it's a mountain that you're climbing and you can't seem to get over the hump, I'm here to tell you that Jesus Christ came and did it for you, he overcame the world, therefore we yes. can overcome any trial, any yes. affliction, any persecution, any pain in our lives. We could overcome because the Lord Jesus did it Hallelujah. already. He did it on the cross. He finished it and his blood saves us. So Hallelujah. therefore we could approach the throne of grace, boldly approach yes. the throne of his grace and overcome because he overcame already and faith in him by grace overcomes and we overcome the world just like he did. Um, think about this. He was a man and had to grow up a man, but had a divine nature because he didn't have a human father. His oh. father was the father in heaven. He was born of a woman, therefore he was man, 100%, but 100% God, but had to grow up. It says in the Bible, he grew up in wisdom. He grew in wisdom and stature. Yes. So that means he had to learn some things, but he was 12 years old teaching the scribes and the Pharisees and the priests. He was in the temple teaching them. And they still rejected him. But he lived a perfect life. Do you understand what it Amen. takes to live a perfect life? 
never yielding to the flesh, never speaking an idle word, always, always in the spirit. And don't forget, he had to go and fast 40 days and 40 nights to overcome that. He had to overcome the world and yield to the divine nature within him. The same way we have to yield to the Holy Spirit within us yes. and yield to the divine nature that the Lord blessed us with. What is the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit is God. It is the Lord. He is a Holy Spirit and he bestows upon us his mighty Holy Spirit just like it descended on Jesus Christ like a dove. It descends upon us and we have to yield to that. We still have some work to do. Faith without works is dead, yes. We don't live by the law, we live by grace, but we yes. have to receive it daily. Yes. We have to yield to that grace and yield to the Spirit of God daily. And. He wants an intimate relationship with each one of us. He doesn't want us just to go to church yes. and say hallelujah. He wants us to, to sup with him. Put down the phone, turn off the cable, sup at the table. Because the Lord's Supper is the greatest supper. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are the servants. We are the chef, so to speak. He is the master. He cooks up the meal. And in order for us to receive, we have to have an intimate relationship with him and read the word and pray and get in our prayer closet yes. and get alone with him. And I'm saying this even to myself because the last couple nights I've been, he's been waking me up three times in the middle of the night at the same exact times. And I only prayed once. I only prayed once. He's waking me up. Yeah. So now I know every time I wake up in the middle of the night, it's for a reason. He wants to sup with me. He wants me to call out to him. And every one of us needs to get to a broken place sometimes. We are hard-headed human beings. We are stubborn. We are prideful. Sometimes it takes yes. a trial in our life yes. or something bad to happen or our family persecuting us mm -hmm. or arguments. Sometimes it takes something disastrous or something bad for us to be broken before the Lord and say, Father, give me answers, Father. I don't know what to do. Shed those tears. He counts every tear. He knows our tears. We cry the tears and he, he puts out his hand and every teardrop goes into his hand. And he remembers them and he will remember them for eternity. Amen. If we cry, sincerely cry tears to the Lord. And he turns those tears into peace and joy. Hallelujah. No tear is, is for no reason. We cry these tears because life is painful. And he is our father and he is a faithful father to always be with us and always answer us if we are truly his children. And I say this to you guys because it's been on my heart. And he, he wants a personal relationship with every yes. single one of us. And he wants us to call out to him. This is a very confusing season. Last season was even more confusing, but there's a shift that took place. Amen. There's a shift on the earth. There's a shift in America that's taking place yes. where things are starting to go back to normal. Life is starting to get back to normal, even though we see people with occultic masks. All the, I have to wear this just to get in the store. I have to pretend like I'm, I have a mask on. I don't even put it all the way up because I can't breathe. And I don't agree with it. Amen? I don't agree with this. But... Don't be surprised if the next fiery trial comes because a lot of prophetic voices and a lot of men of God are sensing it. We're sensing something in the spirit that, that is going to come. We don't know when. It could be this year. It could be next year. It could be during the election, before or after the election. But something else is coming, so we have to be prepared. And that doesn't mean stock up on a million canned goods and, and go crazy in fear. No, he's given us a spirit of power, love, and a yes, sound mind, not yes. fear. That means prepared spiritually we must be prepared spiritually for what's going to come me and her me and jenny got separated for two months during this covid19 pandemic i caught pneumonia now people think i got covid i didn't i was out in the rain i got stuck out in the rain the night before i got soaked the next day i woke up i wasn't feeling well i had pneumonia Everybody wants to attribute this to a million different theories. No, I just got pneumonia. People get sick in the world. It's called life. I mean, it happens. But what I'm trying to convey, what I'm trying to say is that we weren't ready for what happened. We got separated for two months. A lot of, mm -hmm. we, we had a lot of persecution, a lot of bad things. And, and, but it built us up and we're stronger than ever now because of it. So the Bible says, think it not strange Think it not strange when the fiery trial 
approaches your life. Think it not strange because it's there to refine you as a gem, as refined gold. It's there to make you stronger. Yes. Amen. Yes. What do you got, Jen? As the <laughs> refiner's fire. Refined silver and gold. Hallelujah. You know, just all the impurities are coming to the surface and everything's been bubbling up this last season. So we just got to really allow ourselves to really just dig deep and allow his word to dig deep in us because that's a living word and that living word transforms you know we can go to a million counselors and we can go to a million programs and we yes. can go to a million detoxes and we can go to a million rehabs and we can seek you know man for the answers but there's none like the lord jesus no. christ and his word stands forever and it's not a negative thing to seek a counselor for help or right. therapy or see physicians when we need to but we have the great physician and he's as close as the mention of his name so Amen. even when we find ourselves in the time of trouble he is right here with us and even if we chose to make our bed in hell he'd be there with us for sure so we choose this day who we serve as for me and my household and generations and family bloodline, we will serve the Lord. And there's no greater choice than choosing Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the great physician, the wonderful counselor, the mighty God. And so he allowed us to go through this fire this last season so that those impurities have to come to the surface. Like I said in the last video, mm. unless there's an exposure, we need to be confronted with truth. And some of that truth that we're getting from the Lord has to do with the truth about who we are and what's inside of us that's not of him and Absolutely. it has to be confronted so therefore it has to be manifested and situations around us cause a clash where we're directly confronted the new creation part of us is confronted with who we used to be right. and there has to be a divine collision and be confronted uprooted manifest and go, go. and that's what he's doing and it's not uh, pleasant in the moment but the greater glory that comes out of that is so worth it because it's not just for you to get transformed but it's for you to get transformed so you can transform your community mm -hmm. you have a sphere of influence out there we yep. may be on facebook right yeah, now dude. you know somebody in your community you have family you have friends you have co-workers you have social media you have the ability to um affect your sphere of influence whoever that may be through. So it's good to just pray, Lord, increase my sphere of influence, enlarge the place of my tent. And we're gonna get into more videos about dominion and identity and authority. But first, we must understand our identity in Christ. And that really comes from just being in his presence. Right. And there's a greater glory that's coming on the earth. And we could get right. caught up in all these other topics we're going to get into. We're going to get into them. I just don't feel like that's laid on my heart tonight. But yes, in the future, we're going to get into more authority, dominion, power, taking territory. But first and that's foremost, right. none of that comes unless we figure out who we are in Christ and those things begin to get worked out so he can work his word through us and as he's working his word through us his word is actively living and working and changing who we used to be it's by the regeneration of the washing of the water of the word of god that we're being literally regenerated what does a generator do it gives it energy we are getting the spirit of god's energy to keep us going we are being rejuvenated and regenerated from the inside out. It's a, out of the belly shall flow a river of living, living water. And <laughs> so we are not to be running on empty in this season. And it's good to do good works and it's good to serve the Lord. But we really need to have the discernment when to just close the door and to go into our closet, into our inner chamber and to just be with the Lord. I mean, Amen. he allowed the doorknob to fall off my door and my light to get stuck on where when I pulled the chain, you know, on those fan lights, it was not turning off and I was locked in my room and I was supposed to go to this place called Thrive 
in hot bog. My friends wanted me to go. But in my spirit, I, f I felt no release. So it's really important to have the wisdom and discernment to know how to follow the leading of the Holy Spirit of when to go and when to stay back. And people say, oh, that's crazy. You mean I have to like pray about just leaving my house? I'm talking about following the leading of the Holy Spirit. We are praying within our, if we have the Holy Spirit, we're in a constant state of prayer, you know? So we're constantly in fellowship with the Holy Spirit. And so that's a necessity this season, when to go out, when to stay home, when to speak, when to listen. There's seasons and there's moments for specific things, when to pour out, when to receive. But a lot of people are pouring out from a place of emptiness. A lot of people are speaking when God meant for them to be receiving. And um, it's really important so that we could be used where God wants us, but specifically how God wants us. And even more importantly than that, we're being changed and transformed into his image, glory to glory and faith to faith. But it all comes by his presence. And that's where we learn of our identity because we don't know who we are unless we have the identity, the DNA of the father. And we understand sonship and that we've been accepted into the beloved and that's why we cry out abba father. father and because we identify with the love of the father in his presence now we begin to see who he created us to be and we could recognize and put off all the former things concerning who we were not created to be but it's a reprogramming as this regeneration of the word is happening because for 27 years of my life i was programmed with worldly ways worldly thinking this was who I was, and that's not really who God created me to be. So we got to right. humble ourselves and allow the word to minister directly to us and to feed off teachers that God's appointed to help deliver the meal and the word as well. Amen. Amen. You said a lot of good things. One of them is regeneration. We get regenerated. Re means again, right? We get, the, we get the Holy Spirit and we're connected with the Father like we were before we were even born. We become spirit men, spirit women. We become spirit-like. We become God-like, Christ-like. We, we get regenerated and back reconciled back to the Father because of what Jesus Christ did. And now we walk and we yield to the Spirit and we act like God. We, have, we take on the nature of Christ. We take on the nature of God. And with people to find who they are in Christ and find their identity it starts with that it starts with yield like Jenny was saying yielding to the spirit hearing that whisper of the spirit and she also said something very good she said that the spirit you're praying 24 hours a day when you're in the spirit right even when you're not speaking the bible says the spirit utters groanings Hmm. groanings and intercedes for us that cannot yes, be uttered yes. by men words that cannot even be uttered by men that the spirit speaks and i'm not talking about speaking in tongues it's something different it's the spirit intercedes for us speaking in tongues is a great gift that also performs that and does that but we have no idea what this thing really is this life means a lot more than we think we get caught up in entertainment we get caught up in bills we get caught up in everyday life and work and school and all these other things but we don't see the system satan's system this is the the earth has been given into the hands of the wicked this is satan's system even yes. going to school and getting a high class education mm -hmm. and all this stuff i'm not going to break down the secret societies all you guys probably know that and if you don't you will learn it but it's his way of of thinking it's his ways this system is not god's ways they took prayer out of school this system was meant to collapse if we get caught up in this system the number one thing the devil wants us to do is he doesn't want us to get close to the lord he doesn't want us to fast he doesn't want us yes. to pray he doesn't want us to read the word he wants us distracted with work with raising children with commuting uh, mm -hmm. to work back and forth with getting an education with yes. entertainment with celebrities it's funny how they call them stars i don't know how i got yeah. off on this but it's just coming out they call them stars what did what does the bible call the angels of the lord the bible calls them the stars of god so we have uh, we have set up idols and behind those idols and celebrities are fallen angels and powers and principalities so we're worshiping demons not even knowing it how deep is that how clever is satan 
People don't, people underestimate how clever the devil is, even though we have overcome him by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And if we have the Holy Spirit, we are children of the Most High and have overcome the devil. Even if we're a baby Christian, we are maturing and God is with us and he will protect us and his grace abides upon us. But that doesn't mean that the enemy will not send attacks towards us and towards our lives and our families. And it doesn't mean that the enemy is going to stop what he's doing in the system of things. Amen. In the, in the whole scope of things. So we have to remember that. And always, every day, when even when we're so stressed out and we don't know what to do and we're calling our mom, our uncle, our girl, and we're complaining in this. We have to just go and pray and let our frustrations out and let the Lord hear and understand our, our petition. Because a lot of times we want to get answers and shout out to Pastor Dan because he touched on this tonight. We want to get answers from everyone else except the Lord. And we want to go everywhere yes. else except the word of God. And this includes myself. This includes Jenny. I'm talking to everybody, including myself. We have to always remember that the Lord is at the door and he knocks. We have to hear his whisper, hear his knock, sup at his table, approach the throne of his grace because it's available yes. to us 24 hours a day. And he shall never leave us nor forsake us. He is the King of kings and the Lord of lords and he has risen and he has conquered death in the grave and has the keys to Hades. I just want to go over scripture. It's very encouraging. It's from Hebrews. It's the book of Hebrews chapter 4 verse 14 to 16. It's encouraging because it talks about what I was talking about earlier, about Christ overcoming the world and how our faith in him through the grace of God, we overcome the world and we are more than conquerors in Christ Jesus. Therefore, since we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, hallelujah, Jesus, the son of God, let us hold fast our confession for we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses but one who has been tempted in all things as we are, yet without sin. Therefore, let us draw near with confidence to the throne of grace so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. So what I was saying before, if you're going through a trial, if you're, you want to overcome a sin, if you're in desperate need of help, if you don't know what to do, if your life is just full of confusion and the enemy is attacking, we have a high priest who has passed through the heavens. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He is the son of God and let us hold fast our confession for we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses. He has been tempted with every and felt every weakness that we are feeling now or we have ever felt or we will ever feel, but he has overcome it. And the Lord, the Father Yahweh had to send, had to manifest himself in a man to live a perfect life in order for us to be saved because we were so fallen from grace. And now we are in the dispensation of the grace of God, the grace of the Most High, hallelujah. Let us draw near with confidence to the throne of grace. Not, oh, God, no. Hallelujah, Father, help me. Talk to him like a person. He is, talk to him like you would talk to your dad if you were hurting and you were eight years old and you wanted answers and your dad was a loving father and you wanted to talk to him. If you didn't have a dad around, that's okay. But treat it like that because the Lord is a person. It's not something that's part of the whole universe. He is everywhere. He's omnipotent. He's higher than heaven, deeper than hell, but he's right here with you. Amen. He is right here. He is a present help. He is not far. Draw nigh to the throne of grace with confidence. Hallelujah. Because therefore, let us draw near with confidence to the throne of grace so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. So in our time of need, we find more grace. He's already given us grace by saving us. But in our time of need, in the time of the fiery trial, in the time of getting evicted, in the time of not having any way to live, in the time of being laid on your bills, in the time of being Hallelujah. confused, in the time of relationships that have been broken and severed, in these times, in a time of sickness, we may receive mercy from him and find grace in the time and help in the time of need. He is a ever so present help, the Bible says, and he is not far from us. So I just wanna let you guys know that he's, he's with us, hallelujah. 
He is with us and he will never leave us nor forsake us. He is the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings. He has conquered death and hell in the grave. And he stands in the right hand of the Father with power. He yes. is at the throne of grace. So we approach the throne of grace because he is the throne of grace. He yes. is upon the throne on the right hand of power. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Praise the Lord. We have to always remember that he will hear our plea. He will hear, hear our call. He will hear our petition. And he will come down from heaven and heal our hearts. And I didn't mention that if we're going through something emotionally, if something happened to us when we're young or we're in depression or we're in um, anxiety, anxiety, panic attacks, or we need to overcome an addiction, he is an ever-present help. And if we put our petition before the throne of the Lord, he will answer and he will answer in a mighty way. He looks at the heart. Yes. He looks in, at sincerity. If we're sincere, that's faith. That's a gift he gave us of faith. We're being sincere and calling on him. And as the church, you know, we have authority. If things are coming upon the earth, we have authority to pray to the Lord. If we come together, where two are gathered in my name, I am present. If we come together in the name yes. of Jesus Christ and pray and cry out to the Lord, he will tarry judgment. He will tarry certain things on the earth that are, that are supposed to come even sooner. Amen. Like the Bible says, if the days weren't short, no flesh would be left alive, but he shortened the days for the elect's sake, for our sake, for the church's sake. Hallelujah. So yes, there are perilous times that are coming and even now are on the earth, but we have, just imagine being here and living now without the Lord Jesus Christ. I can't, to be wow. honest with you. I'm very grateful and we should all be grateful to him and thank him at the end of every day. Say, thank you, Lord. Thank you for saving me. Mary, I see you. You're always thanking the Lord. Even though you're doing it on Facebook, I'm sure you do it in your personal life. That's just the manifestation of what you do in your personal life. You're a prayer warrior. You're a mighty woman of God. God bless you. Where You're in our prayers, and every one of you guys are in our prayers yes. all the time. Amen. We love you guys, and the Lord loves you. Hallelujah. He's faithful, and he's promised us this glorious, inheritance that he's given to the saints and that's you and that's me that's us and so we're just taking our rightful territory but you know more importantly than that is just really just being in fellowship with the holy spirit just being in his presence like he wants your heart he wants yeah. our hearts he wants all of us he wants lordship over every area and the only way to be able to surrender that over is because of that loving relationship and having that understanding of what he did at the cross and how much love he has for each and every single one of us personally and all of mankind around us it just gives us a different perspective when we look at the world and we understand that every time we go into a store like we're parked at right now. Every time we go somewhere and we see people walk by, each one of those souls is destined to go to eternity. And when we understand the love of the Father towards us and we've received His goodness and we've received His grace and we've received His forgiveness and we've received His mercy, mercy rejoices against judgment and those who love much have been forgiven much. We just want to give back all that we are and all that we have. The more and more we identify with the love of God and the finished work on the cross. Amen. That's how we get transformed and just stay in his presence. Amen. And this, the hour is late. There's an urgency in this very hour. And by hour, we mean season of time. And he's just calling our hearts back. You know, maybe some of us have drifted away or been distracted, like Eric said, with the things of this world. So he allowed those things to get shut down right. to show his rule and his reign and his sovereignty right. and his lordship over those who've made him lord. But ultimately, he is lord over this land. Maybe some people don't want to allow him to be, but in mm. the end, um, every single knee is going to bow and every, every tongue, tongue will confess. confess 
what that he is Lord, but how come it doesn't say Savior? Because we have the choice and the chance now mm. to make him Savior. He is the Savior of the world, but on that day to some people, he will not be recognized to them as their Savior. Right. And you can make a difference in that person's life today so that they don't have to stand on that day unprepared. And so it's really important that we're in his presence because the more we're in his presence, the more we grasp the depth of that love and that it's not just for us to hoard, but to show humanity and to reveal, you know, the, the sons of God are revealed that all of earth is groaning right now, especially for the manifestation of the sons of God. And maybe their sense of groaning doesn't look to you like what you think that scripture means. Maybe it's in a form of frustration. Maybe it's in a form of tears. Maybe it's in a form of cursing and being at their wits end. But they just need a word of encouragement. Maybe it's in the form of drinking their lives away, taking drugs, whatever it may be. It's their form of groaning for the manifestation of the sons of God to reveal the truth. And we have this moment, this present in time, this moment in time, we have this present moment right here and right now. So it's really about what we do with each and every day and to really just be yielded to the Holy Spirit. But he'll speak through us so we don't have to fear. We don't have to fear making a mistake or we don't have to fear being rejected for what was spoken when we trust in the Lord to do it through us. And when we understand our acceptance into the beloved, when we understand how we're accepted by the Father because of what Jesus Christ did and having Jesus as our Lord and personal Savior and having a strong daily relationship and walk with Him, we don't fear man's opinion. We don't fear man's rejection. They can only reject Christ in you the hope of glory if we're in fear of rejection it's a spirit of pride that needs to be broken and delivered of and we can't be living in a place of pride right now but by humility and humbleness we esteem one another more highly than ourselves and the spirit of love and unity is coming over the body of Christ. And God is breaking the walls of division this season. Amen. And it's time to come together in a solemn assembly and to gather ourselves together. Because Amen. he's coming soon and we're preparing in our hearts for his second coming. So we have to make room in the walls of our heart to lay down every idol. And within the walls of some people's hearts have been erected idols and those idols are coming tumbling down and it's revealing what we are made of and the house that is built on the sand shall fall but the house that is built on the solid rock of solid jesus rock. christ Amen. will stand when the winds come and the sea is raging and beats upon that house mm. the house that is built on the rock will be the house that stands and that house meaning you and that house is meaning me when everything that can be shaken will, will be, be shaken. shaken those things that will remain are going to be the eternal things of the kingdom of god every time you said to somebody jesus loves you today mm -hmm. every baptism yeah every time you fed the hungry and said hey jesus loves you can i pray for you every time you went to the supermarket and saw people in wheelchairs and casts and you went over to them and asked if you could pray for them and stepped out with a holy boldness yep. we need the holy spirit because the holy spirit gives us the Ooh, boldness yes. to Thank step you, out because you shall receive power it's not wise to do this without any of what we spoke on here without the holy spirit's power it's the holy spirit that's going to do all of this through us so you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you shall be witnesses to Judea and Samaria and to the uttermost parts of the earth. And what is the requirement before Jesus Christ returns to the earth? He is having us 
spread the gospel to the four corners of the earth and Amen. then the end shall come. come and when he does return will the son of man find faith on the earth mm. and faith is a gift and faith works together with the holy spirit's ability through us to declare a promise that he's promised us over our life and the lives of our loved ones our families and we will see it come to pass and we go from a certain level of faith to another level to another and higher and higher. We come up higher this season. He's saying to arise with wings as eagles because we've waited on the Lord. We've trusted in the Lord. And those who wait on the Lord shall mount up with wings as eagles, shall stand and not faint and run and not grow weary. And so we are about to soar this season to new heights. But with that comes an uncertainty. There must be an uncertainty somewhere for us to give faith the ability to actively operate in that area. We have to have an uncertainty. We have to go out into the deep. We have to go out into the unknown. We have to go out without compromise. We have to go out to pass our comfortability level through the Holy Spirit, which is our comforter or we can sell out and sell short and live less than the life that God has ordained for right. us to live. We can live in his uh, Hallelujah. Can, <laughs> hallelujah. That was great. He, we can live in his acceptable will or his good will, but we're not going to be living in his perfect will because he has a life I don't want to sound like a motivational speaker, but he has a life beyond our wildest dreams. He will give us our heart's desires and not the fleshly heart desires. He will remove the heart of stone within us and replace it with a heart of flesh. In other words, he will give us desires we never had before. He will actually give us desires that we never thought we even dreamed of having. We had other worldly desires before, but we get new desires once the Holy Spirit comes upon us. Hallelujah. Amen to that, man. We get these uh, heavenly desires and we lay our treasures up in heaven and we will be multiply blessed in, on this earth. We will be blessed in multiplicities. I want to read this scripture, Acts chapter 2 and what Jenny said. Repent, Peter said to them, and be baptized each one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. When the apostles who were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had welcomed God's message, they sent Peter and John to them. After they went down there, they prayed for them so the Samaritans might receive the Holy Spirit. Now, the Samaritans were Gentiles. For he had not yet come down on any of them. They had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then Peter and John laid their hands on them and they received the Holy Spirit. And when Simon saw, well, I'm not going to get into Simon, but the, from the laying on of hands. So do you all know, do you all realize or understand how much power we have as the saints? We could go out there and preach the gospel to people through the Holy Spirit. And don't worry what you will say at that hour, because the Lord Jesus will give you the words mm -hmm. to say, to be bold to people, to step out and preach the gospel to people boldly, even if they come against you and they spit yes. at you and they curse at you, you will stand firm upon the truth oh, yeah. and preach it. And we have the power to, not us, the Holy Spirit through us enables us and empowers us to bring people to their knees in repentance because of the goodness of God and the revelation of Jesus Christ. Yes. And on the, by the laying on of hands after they're baptized, they can receive the Holy Spirit. Yes. And I believe, you know, I've seen people receive the Holy Spirit just coming upon them. This scripture just said it didn't. They only got baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And then Peter laid his hands on them and they received it. But just think of it. We have the Holy Spirit dwelling with, within us. And like Jen was saying, if we are living the God's perfect will, not his acceptable will, not his good will, if we're living out his perfect will, yielding to the flesh and supping with him and having an intimate relationship with him and having him heal all the inner parts of us and uproot all the bad things within us from the past because the old man always tries to rise up the old man rises up when the spirit the spirit wars against the flesh and the flesh against the spirit it's a constant war it's a yes. constant battle but if we're in intimacy with Christ that battle is won every day if we're receiving his grace daily and in intimacy and and listening and listening and hearing the whispers of the Holy Spirit throughout the day we are more than conquerors we have conquered the flesh 
And when we do that and we're living God's perfect will, we walk with power. Yes. Power and demonstration. It's not only by words. It's not by excellency yes. of speech. It's by power and demonstration. And people could see the glory upon you. People could see the change in your countenance. Yes. Just mine over the last couple of years. I see it in the mirror. I can't even believe it sometimes. I wouldn't be on this video two years ago. I would not. I would not know what to say. I would be in my flesh still. God is doing amazing and miraculous things in my life. And it's the grace Amen. of the Most High. And I still have issues. I still have problems. Nobody is perfect. But walking out His perfect will just means not that we're going to be perfect, but that we're yielding to His perfect spirit every day. And we're allowing His grace to fill us up and allowing the love of God to, to, to rule our soul and rule yes. our bodies. Because we have... Yes. Spirit, soul, body. If we allow the spirit of God to rule over our soul, then therefore rules over the body. So that's rule. Who's ruling you? Who is your master? I'll ask you that question tonight. Who is your master? Who is ruling over you? We all should ask, our, ask ourselves that question every day. Who is ruling over us? Is our body ruling over us? Is our soulish mm -hmm. realm ruling over us? Or is the spirit of God ruling over us during our daily activities, whatever we're doing, even at work. And it's very hard because this system is set up with a lot of wicked people and a lot of people that don't know Christ. And we're trying to be a light unto them and, 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 and preach Christ to them. But there's a lot of people who are unloving, who are bitter, who have a lot of issues. And it doesn't matter. You could be in AA and NA for 25 years, but you could still have deep-rooted issues that have never yes. been healed because you never let Christ in your life. Christ will heal, completely heal you. It's not a partial. It's not that you have to work at it every day yes. and keep talking to a sponsor and keep writing out steps. and keep. It's, it, it's just a surrender to the Spirit Amen. of God, and He does the work. He, meaning the Holy Ghost, does the work for us. Amen? Amen. Amen. Faith without works is dead, yeah. but the working of my faith, faith is in action. Yes. We must put our faith, the gift that we've been given by God, because all of us have a different measure of the portion of faith that he's given us. And if we want an increase, we can pray and God gives the increase. And we must put our faith uh, to work. Our faith will work for us yeah. when it matches God's grace. Amen. And in prayer, we declare it to be so. Let it be so. Amen. Amen. And it is. So God spoke and said, let there be light. And the universe had to align to obedience of his word. And he Thank is God. always faithful to his word. Amen. It stands. It never fails. In the end, that's all that will endure forever. Everything else is about to be burned up someday burned with a up. fervent, fervent heat. heat. Ooh. Think but of that. Think of that. Last forever. Fervent heat. Everything will be burnt up and annihilated except for the Word of God that was manifested in flesh and is the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord, the Father Yahweh, exalted him above everything that's called godly, everything that's called Hallelujah. holy, everything that's called wicked, every prince, every power, every principality, every ruler, every dominion. It is his. It's given into the hands of the Lord Jesus Christ. So that's the God we serve. Choose ye this day whom you shall serve. Because that's the God we serve and he's a mighty God. And he does mighty things. So we're going to ask you guys now, if you need prayer, please type it in uh, the comments and we'll pray for you right here tonight. Mm -hmm. uh, Julio, Mary, um, any of you guys, anybody, you know, have anxiety, depression. Do they want to do this? Do you oh, do this yes, sometimes? actually... Before we pray, we're, we're going to take part in communion, in remembrance of the Lord Jesus Christ. And he went to the cross at Calvary and he did a finished work. And that's why he said, it is finished. And then he gave up the ghost. His spirit descended and ascended on the third day to the right hand of power. And we celebrate that. We remember that. We take part in this for the washing of sins and for the remembrance 
of what the Lord Jesus Christ did for us. It's Holy Communion. You guys could get bread, mm -hmm. uh, even a big piece, a small piece, and then you could break it, um, get some juice. If you don't have any wine, get cranberry juice, grape juice. You could even get orange juice. Just get some kind of juice. It's, I mean, it's better to get grape juice because it's the closest thing to wine, and that's what we're doing because we don't drink alcohol, but... Uh, whatever you guys feel comfortable with, you could get red wine if you want. As long as it's a little bit, don't get whacked out. Don't get drunk on me over here. We're drunk with the new wine over here. Amen. Hallelujah. So whatever you guys want to do, um, and I'll, I'll give you a few minutes to get that ready. Maybe a Amen. couple minutes if you do want to partake. You, you didn't do communion tonight. You should do it. Okay, whatever you want to yeah, do. Yeah, because you didn't do the communion tonight at church. She missed it. She was playing the piano at church, so she didn't get to partake in the communion in the Lord's Supper, so she could do it now. Mm -hmm. Amen. I'm waiting so for that Jenny, to get it, or should I go now? No, wait okay. like another 30 seconds, maybe another minute. You guys okay. could get a piece of bread or some grape juice or whatever you have handy. The glory of the latter house. I was just looking that up, the book of Acts. That's crazy. I was just looking. I'm on the book of Acts. I was just there looking. There we go. It's greater than the glory of the former house. Yes, I was just thinking it. That's the Holy Spirit. We're in the glory of the latter house. The latter rain has come. It's going to be a glorious season. And it's just like basking in it. Just absorb it. Just like a sponge. It's just, he's so, he's so tangible. You can feel his manifest presence and there's nothing like it i mean nothing that this world will offer you will compare to that internal state of rest to that peace to that joy the glory that only he can reveal it's just on such a personal level and when he speaks his voice is like many waters and from one day to another day, do you know that it utters speech? Mm -hmm. And that everything that has breath praises the Lord. You know, all of creation, all of creation was created to worship the Father. All of oh, creation. The trees, the birds, the grass, everything. That's why you see some people, I, I'm not condoning this at all. I've done it when I was younger. I'm not condoning psychedelics, but you see some people take LSD or take mushrooms they see the trees breathing and and doing a forward mo it's like they the, the trees are alive because when you take psychedelics you open yourself up spiritually your third eye your pineal gland opens i don't recommend it at all because you open yourself up to demonic possession and that's why when people take dmt they see all these sorts of creatures and serpents and they think they're friendly with them they're laughing at them I don't condone it, but what I'm saying is that th there's a dimension we can't see that the whole creation is worshiping the Lord. When the birds chirp in the morning, why do you think they do that? They don't only do that to wake us up. They do that because they're praising and worshiping the Lord. Um, lions, the animal kingdom, they all have their separate ways of worshiping the Lord. Every green thing grown, every flower, every tree. Everything that wasn't made by man's hands that the Lord created worships the Lord of hosts. And it's Haggai chapter 2 verse 9. The glory of the latter house shall be greater than the former, saith the Lord of hosts. And this place will I give peace, saith the Lord of hosts. And I'm trying to find the book of Acts. But that's the verse most quoted for the latter house. All right, everybody got your communions ready? That works, uh, Gary, that works. Yeah, that works, the lemonade. Yeah, that's good. Okay, great. Praise God. Praise the Lord. All right, so we just, we thank you, Lord, for your body that was beaten and broken mm. and bruised on that cross yes. so that we may be made whole today. We thank you, Lord God, for your sacrifice and what you've done for us. Yes. And we identify with your sufferings. Amen. We do this in remembrance of you, Father. And we do this in remembrance of you, Lord. We just thank you so much. And we don't take it lightly. And if we have, Lord, then we repent. Forgive us in the name of Jesus Christ. Everyone should, real quick, everyone should examine themselves 
partaking of the Lord's Supper. We should examine ourselves when we're eating the body and drinking the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ and, and pray and really examine where we are with the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And just say, Lord, I, I repent for my sins. Yes. Forgive I'm us. turning the other way. Amen. I receive your forgiveness. Amen. And I receive an overflow of your healing power, virtue power Hallelujah. right now. I can yes. even feel it as I speak. Me too. Hallelujah. So in the name of Jesus, I'm doing this in faith for complete wholeness. Wholeness is in my mind. Wholeness in my emotions. Wholeness in my body. Wholeness in my provision. Wholeness to every single area of my life that yes, your grace, Lord. that your unearned favor is flowing and abounding towards me. I receive it now in Jesus' name. Yes, Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ. Receive the grace of the Lord. Amen. He says rest and he says receive. That's our strength. We thank you, Lord, for your blood that was shed on the cross. Hallelujah. That we are made well. Holy. We're made whole. We're made well. Thank you, Lord, that this blood right here cleanses us of all unrighteousness. Thank you that you shed your blood, and in that blood is life yes. everlasting. Because without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sins. So we thank you right now. Hallelujah. The blood of the presence. new covenant. The blood of the new testament. Spirit. Yes. Blood and water. Hallelujah. Yes, we thank you for your blood right now, Lord God, that you're just washing us, you're cleansing us, you're sanctifying us. Amen. We are made how you created us to be. Yes. So wash away all the residue tonight. Make us in your image, Father. And wash every bit of residue that this world has tried to put in us. And even in our uh, minds, mm. uh, he's saying that a lot of us have been eating off the wrong tree so even as we take this blood of jesus right now in um just envision all of the dirt from the things that we've been watching from the things that we've been listening to that were unholy things they were dirty like spiritually we've every time we leave our house we're bombarded even subliminally with messages that are not of the lord so as we do this today let this blood cleanse everything that we have allowed into our eye, through our eyes, through our ears, through our minds, just what we're seeing, what we're listening to, and be very mindful from here on out of what we're opening up to in that kind of way and just fill on his word. So we thank you, Lord. Cleanse us in Jesus' name, and we just partake. No, it was long, guys. Sorry. sorry Whatever he that. gives us to say, we got to say it. So actually, no, I'm not sorry. I <laughs> take it back. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, there's healing. There's life in the blood. The blood still works. The blood still works. The blood, the blood of Jesus Christ, the blood. The blood of Jesus Christ, the blood, the blood of Jesus Christ, the blood. <laughs> Hallelujah. The blood still works. That saving blood, redeeming blood, redeems all mankind. The blood of the Lamb that saved my soul, the blood of the Lamb. It washed me whole. It's the blood of the Lamb that set me free. The blood <laughs> of the Lamb, <laughs> Jesus Christ. 
No oh. likes and no hearts. <laughs> they all love it. Yeah, they all love it, sure. Bear with us, guys. We're Any not prayer looking requests? For that. No, we're not looking for any. Listen, it could be one person. I said it before. One person or one thousand people. He the leaves power the and the blood. Amen. For the Listen, and he leaves the ninety-nine for the one. A prayer request. Anybody got a prayer request? Anybody going through depression, anxiety? Anybody going through confusion? Anybody going through being broke, not being able to pay your bills? Not, Anything that is not of the Lord, anything unclean in your life that you want to get rid of, any prayers that you have, we will pray for you now. Just put in the prayer request in the comments and we'll pray for you guys. Amen. Amen. So. Everybody can use prayer. Yeah. Right? I know I can. I know I can. <laughs> pray for us guys, please. Because we get resistance from doing these videos sometimes and... For going to church and doing what we're doing We're, you know, starting to do a lot of things In the body of Christ Little by little, only by God's grace So pray for us that we are strong in the Lord And that uh, any resistance is broken In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ Amen Luke 15, amen So according to Second Chronicles 5 I just want to do this before we pray sure. Is that okay? Sure Second Man. Chronicles 5, verse 11. And it came to pass when the priests came out of the most holy place, for all the priests who were present had sanctified themselves mm. without keeping to their divisions. And the Levites who were the singers and those of Asaph and Haman and Jedithon with their sons and their brethren, stood at the east end of the altar, clothed in white linen, having cymbals, stringed instruments, and harps, and with them 120 priests, sounding with trumpets. Indeed, it came to pass, when the trumpeters and singers were as one, mm. to make one sound to mm. be heard in praising and thanking the Lord, and when they lifted up their voice with the trumpets and the cymbals and the instruments of music and praised the Lord, saying, For he is good, his mercy endures forever, that the house, the house of the Lord was filled with a cloud, so that the priests could not continue ministering because of the cloud. The glory cloud. For the glory of the Lord filled the house. And prior to the glory of the Lord filling the house, what were they praising and saying? They were talking about God's goodness and God's mercy and how it's everlasting and how it endures forever. They were also, what highlights to me and what stands out to me in this verse, is that they were uni there was a unity. They were one. There was a unity among them. Look at the windows, John. The glory cloud. They're all... <laughs> the so windows are all whited out. It's not cold outside. It's not... There's no reason why it should be like this, but... <laughs> the heat emanating from from the Holy Spirit ministering, the heat actually creates that. And I, we want to get to a point when we feel, when we actually experience the, 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 the maximum amount of the glory cloud when we can see it and we can't even see each other. We can see the cloud, but we can't see each other. Mm -hmm. That's the point. That's the um, goal. That's where we want to get to in the Holy Spirit and in the Lord. That comes by what? Being, being one. Being unified. Being unified, right. And where two or three, right, doesn't have to be. I mean, it, it would be better if there were a bunch of people together, um, like at church, but even with a couple of people just being one in one spirit in harmony with each other in yes. Christ, it's very important. And it I think is. we have to get to that place this season yeah. and in the seasons following on the earth. So yes. the church could be birthed because the birth pains is the birth of the church of the Most High, the church of Jesus Christ being born. What people say, well, how, why does the church have to be born? I don't understand. The church was on the earth after Christ died. He established the church. No, the, the tr true church, when Jesus comes back, the church, Jesus is coming back to take up. Even though the dead shall rise in Christ as well, the church that will be on the earth at the time of Jesus Christ's return. Hallelujah. 
It's a powerful church that's in unity. Church. Yeah, it's an old church. The signs, wonders, yeah, but we don't seek after that. See, a wicked generation seeks after a sign, right? We don't we don't walk around seeking after these things. We're heavenly minded. We seek after first preaching the gospel to people and getting souls saved. But through the Holy Spirit, these things shall follow, Jesus said, right? You shall hear people's signs, wonders. People will be healed. People will fall out. People will get baptized yes. in the name of Jesus Christ, filled with the Holy Spirit. These things will follow if we are truly walking with the Lord. Amen. Amen. Please, please pray for me and my family. My parents are going through pain and addictions and fear. And I've been going through... I can't see. And I've been going through addiction on CBD. It's Jaleel. And pain and anxiety, me and my parents. Please pray for me and my family. You want to pray? I think you should pray. Oh, okay. Addictions, addictions fear, family... Okay. I pray for you all the time, Julio. We're gonna. Uh, I I think I feel like Jenny should pray for you. I feel like I just feel that right now. All right. So we just lift up Julio and his family in the name of Jesus. We break any addictions and repetitive demonic cycles that would continue trying to impress um, delusions on mm. your soul. We thank you, Lord God, for renouncing dark arts amen we thank you holy spirit that your spirit of truth is revealing all things and a fresh revelation is coming to him we thank you that you would minister to his parents about who you created him to be but first and foremost about who jesus christ really is yeah Son of God and Messiah who's coming soon. We come against any generational curse affecting the family. Addiction, anxiety, depression, confusion and insomnia and fear be broken right now in the name, in of, the Jesus name of Jesus. Yes, in the name of Jesus. And healing, virtue, power just flow right now. And just touch him, Lord. and Touch him, Father, in the name of Jesus. You got a hold of him, Holy Spirit, and you're not letting him go Amen. now. Amen. So you're not alone, and he's with you. He will never leave you or forsake you. Amen and amen. Amen. And we, we come against and break and bind any demonic powers that are against him in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And we loose them out from among him and... Loose them out of his house in the name of Jesus Christ. Let them go back to where they came from. It shouldn't have to be said over and over again. The power of the Holy Spirit is accomplishing these things right now. The fire of the Most High God in the name of Jesus Christ is overtaking him in his life. And his parents will be touched. Let them get the fresh revelation of the Lord Jesus Christ. And let every idol be put down and we break any addictions in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Marijuana, CBD, these things are illusions. These yes. things are sorcery and illusions. We break any delusions or illusions in the name of the Lord Jesus. And we claim the peace and grace of the Lord Jesus Christ over his life. That he will yes. be a man of God. He will be an evangelist that you're raising him up to be, Father. Let your hedge of protection be around him for the, any demonic powers to be repelled and not being able to touch him in the name of Jesus Christ. He is an anointed one of the Most High and he is a soldier in your army, Father. He is a soldier in your Most High army in the last days. Let him raise, be raised up into his calling right now and send him to your people, not over Facebook, not on the internet. Send him to your people that have the Holy yes. Spirit. I prayed this prayer two years ago and you answered. So I pray it now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that you send him to a church that are, are truly your people that will guide him and lead him in the way that is right. Yes. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray this. Amen. Amen. It is finished. Amen. It is finished. Prayers for healing of body and heart, homelessness, oh. hurts, brothers and sisters that they stay on straight and the narrow path that they may be healed and held up in Christ 
Gary's brothers and sisters in Christ were to pray for and healing of his body and heart and homelessness. homelessness. Hey, Gary, brother, I want to let you know I've been there. I've been there many times by the grace of God that I'm not there right now. It's by the grace of God that I'm even alive right now. I've been in comas. I've been stabbed in my spine. All types of stuff happened throughout my lifetime, but I'm here because you're here because the Lord Jesus Christ has a plan mm -hmm. for your life. Yes. And he is raising up mighty men of God right now. I'm not saying I'm one, but he's raising up his own younger people in our generation, um, either younger or older, it doesn't matter the age, but he's raising up men and women of God that have a testimony from the past that have lived a, a terrible life in the streets and all types yes. of stuff and have came out of it and they are on fire for the Lord. We're on fire for the Lord because we came from death. We came from the homelessness, the street life, the drugs, the hustling, all of that, man. So yep. you're not alone and I understand and have compassion and empathy towards you because I, I understand I've been there before. I don't know what your situation is exactly, but we pray right now, Father, that you touch Gary you touch Gary Hawkins and you give him a revelation of your goodness, Father. And that you hold him up and that you raise him up as a mighty man of the Most High. And you get him to a place where he could focus on you and be intimate with you. Get him to anywhere, it doesn't matter, somewhere where he could rest his head for this season to be built up in the Lord and become a warrior in your mighty army, Father. Let homelessness is a curse. Let it be broken in the name of Jesus Christ. It was a curse on my life. It was a curse on many saints' lives that it, it is broken now in the name of the Lord Jesus by his blood, by his stripes. We are healed and the Lord will provide for us, will provide a roof over our heads, will provide food yes. for us, will provide a job, will provide a vehicle, will provide everything in time if we trust yes. in the Lord and receive his grace by faith. So Gary, I pray that the Lord sends you gift of faith right now, an increase of faith in the name of Jesus Christ, an increase of your spiritual gifts yes. in the name of Jesus Christ. I see mighty things in your life, brother man. You're going to do great and the Lord is with you and his hedge of protection is around you. In yes. the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray that forevermore from now on for the rest of your life, you shall be increased in goods and you shall be increased in your gifts and you shall be increased in the Lord Jesus. And you and the Lord Jesus will sub together and have an intimate relationship with each other and everything else shall be added unto you, the Lord yes. said. And for your brothers and sisters in Christ, I pray for all the saints around the world, including your brothers and sisters, that they are all on the straight and narrow path and that they are all held up and established yes, in the word of the Lord because the word oh, is forever and eternal. We are temporal yeah, beings that shall be raised up by the word of God in flesh. Hallelujah. So I pray, Gary, that your brothers, your sisters, our brothers, our sisters, that all the yes. saints are established and made strong right now and during persecutions, during trials, during afflictions in their lives, sicknesses, that they are being broken off of the saints right now and that the saints of God will get the gospel out to the four corners of the earth. We always pray for the saints of God around the world. Around the world, we all have brothers and sisters. We are all of one body. And when we get together, we should be of one mind and one harmony like Jen was talking about. We should be of one and we will feel and see the glory of God. It shall come upon the earth. And I feel it right now. Hallelujah. I'm on fire. Because Gary, you are a mighty man of the Lord. Don't let the devil creep in and tell you something different, bro. If you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. And you repent and are baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You are a child of the Most High. In fact, the minute you get the revelation of the Lord Jesus. You are a child of the Most High. Yes. Amen. Nothing shall come nigh thy dwelling. Nothing shall harm you. What happened with the Israelites Amen. in Egypt? They put the blood of the lamb on the doorpost. All the plagues consumed the Egyptians. But the Israelites were spared because they put the blood on the doorpost. What kind of blood is on the doorpost of your hearts? Is it the blood of sacrificed demons or is it the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ? Because if it's the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, we are protected. It is a protection over us that bad things could happen. Bad things in life are going to happen, but we will be preserved. We will be preserved. Yes. And I know this firsthand. He will not let anything happen to us if we, 
if we have a calling and a purpose to fulfill, it shall be done. If he started a, a perfect work, he will finish it perfectly. Amen? He will. He will not tarry in doing that. He will finish it. We have to trust in the Lord. Yeah. Any more prayers? Okay. There is, so for Gary, breaking of these illusions, for illusions in his family. Yeah. Well, we touched on that before, but I, I'll say another prayer, and you could, you could follow, Jen, if you want. Father, we break the spirit of delusion in the name of Jesus Christ. We, illusion is of witchcraft, and it is of the dark arts, and it is of darkness. Mm -hmm. So we break any witchcraft spells upon him or his family in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And saints, yes. I encourage you to keep praying for us while we come against the darkness. Because it will try to penetrate, but it shall not penetrate the blood on the doorpost of our hearts. Amen. Yes. But we come against that spirit and we come against any confusion because illusion is part of confusion. They go together even though they are different. So any, any illusions or confusions or manipulations or intimidations or control, it's all of the witchcraft spirit. And it is broken. I break it and bind it up over your family right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I cast it out in the name of Yahweh HaMashiach, the Messiah. And it is, he said it is finished and he told us we have the authority as the church to pray for these things and they shall be so. It shall come to pass. Amen. Um, I want, I, I, we, me and Jenny both were speaking about this before. I would love for you guys, after we pray for you a week later, a month later, whatever, to give us reports and to tell us how you guys are doing. Keep in contact with us. Don't just let us pray for you and then you lose touch and you fall off the face of the earth. We want to know how you're doing. We want to talk to you. It doesn't mean call us 25 times a day because we have lives too, but we're, we're here for you. We, we are here for you guys and we're here to help you. Um, and some of you guys are probably here to help us too. We, we edify each other. So please stay in touch with us if you can. After we pray for you, let us know how you're doing um, in the name of Jesus Christ. And, you know, that's about it. We just have to accept the grace of God daily. Amen. Always <laughs> and forever. Any more prayers? Tandy. Let me just see one thing. Wow. Okay, so Tandy. My Tandy is asking for healing in her second toes. Healing in her toes. To for her toes to get back into alignment. Yeah. That's all you, Jenny. Okay. Yeah. All right, thank you, Lord. Jenny, Jenny heals. She, she, the Holy Spirit moves through her for healing. So we're going to pray right now and agree in the name of Jesus Christ. It's Go all ahead. the Holy Spirit. Amen, it is. <laughs> it is. It's so healing for Tandy. We thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. We speak to her toes right now. We command you to be aligned right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, just be made whole. Hallelujah. Be healed. Thank you, Father God, that the Holy Spirit is strengthening Tandy to be able to walk mm. and be strong, Amen. but not for herself, but so she can do it for the glory of God. Amen. And she will have a testimony yes. to share with other people, to testify that the things that God is doing are real. And just any... Witchcraft attacks are broken by the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. And everything that's trying to come against you and the opposition that you experienced this season, it's all working out in your favor and you persevered. And he says, well done. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Be in alignment in the name of Jesus Christ. Be in alignment. Yes. Heal in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Is already. Amen. It is finished. It is a finished and perfect. I think there's more down there. Work. She, he, by his stripes we are healed. healed. Right. Present. Yes. But the cross is past tense, right? Anytime, anytime. Anytime, Julia. We love you, brother. I'm scrolling through, guys. Bear with me. Pray, Pray for, for 
Tiara, pray for her house to be on fire for God, for physical health, and her health to be better, because her health has been under attack. So right now, I pray for the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, Tiara, to cover your home and cover your temple and your house, which is your body. I pray from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet that mm -hmm. the glory of the Most High and the Holy Spirit of fire is upon you and that every sickness is being burnt out in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ right now and that your house, from that fire, the glory, the, your family will behold the glory of God on you and upon you. And they will be touched by the light of the Holy Spirit and they will be on fire for the Lord. And it is not a strange fire. It is indeed the fire of the Holy Spirit that is upon us now will be transferred through Facebook, through, the, through this tool that the devil is using, that God is using for his glory and his good. The Holy Spirit is transferring the fire unto you and that from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet, you are being healed and every un holy and unclean cell is being evaporated and exterminated now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, Yahweh Shai the Messiah, and that your family sees that you are being healed and sees your faith and behold your countenance changing and they glorify the Lord because of it and they get on their knees and repent from the goodness of God and are saved and are baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray for that, for your family, and I pray that every unclean thing yes. or unclean spirit, I bind it up and break it. I pray that it leaves. I command it to leave now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, and I pray for the glory of God and the fire of the Holy Spirit to just consume you tonight. Even let the Lord, Father, wake her up in the middle of the night and sup with her. And let your intimate relationship with the Father increase and never decrease. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray, amen. And I pray that your Holy Spirit, Father, never departs from Tiara and that stays with her. And that even if she's the only one and her family doesn't repent and her family doesn't get on their knees, even if according to your will, Father, let her stand strong. Let her yes. be strong in the Lord. Let her be on fire. Let her be a testimony unto them. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, Yahweh Shai HaMashiach, the Son, the Messiah. Amen. Amen. It's Tiara, do you have any issues with your aunt? There you go. Prophetic word. I'd like to know. We dabble in, in prophecy. Prophecy. We dabble in, in prophecy. Prophecy. <laughs> <laughs> Let me just say, do you have any issues with your aunt? I'll just go on and continue. And then we'll pray for Mary's prayer. Yeah. So, she said, praise God, I don't know. Okay, so. Do you have any issues with your aunt, Tiara? Yes. There you go. Yeah. So, God wants to work that out. And, you know, he he's on the move. He's working in that area. So whatever's going on in between you and your aunt, you know, God wants to see that settled. My cousin was just murdered. My aunt is having a hard time. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry to hear that. But God will heal the brokenhearted and bind up the wounds. So we're meant to pray for your aunt. And for what she's going through because of everything that happened to your cousin. I'm sorry to hear what happened. Sorry but, you hear that, Tiara. We just pray that your cousin is in the hands of the Lord. And that uh, his soul is at rest and at peace. And we pray his soul to God, for God to have mercy on his soul. And for him to be saved on that last day. And I just pray for strength and healing towards your aunt. And that God's virtue healing power overtakes your aunt Tiara. And that in this process, not we don't only pray for a heart to be healed, but a heart can never fully be healed if she doesn't accept Jesus Christ. So we pray for the Holy Spirit to overtake her and give her a revelation of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah crucified. And that that is the only way, the only truth and the only life. And he is the light of the world, came into the world and was rejected. And if she's feeling rejected now, he was rejected before her. And let her accept Christ in her heart and call on the name of the Lord. 
and be saved. And I pray that for everybody's family. We pray for everyone's family to be saved. And after they are saved, their hearts will be new. They will become new. Behold, all things become new. I will replace your heart of stone with a heart of flesh, the Lord says. So he will do a mighty work. And like Jenny says, even when we don't see it, even when we don't hear it, he's working. He is working. Yes, he never stops working. Wow. The devil has wow. to try. Amen. The devil has to try to work. He can't be at all places at once. He can only be in one place, but he has ranks of demons, so on and so forth. The Lord has ranks of heavenly angels and he is everywhere. He doesn't even need the angels. That's why one third of the angels were swept by the tail of the dragon. Did he really need? Does, he doesn't need anyone. He is self-sustainable, self-sufficient. He is omnipotent. He is the Lord of hosts. And if we have the Lord on our side, we should always feel peaceful and secure because yes. he is with us. And even if we die in this life, so what? To live is Christ and to die is gain. Mm -hmm. we, we will be raised up on the last day. We will go to sleep. Next thing you know, we'll be raised up with Christ. So who cares? Let's live at peace and try to bring as much, as many people to the Lord as we can. Preach this gospel. Love people with all our heart. Love thy neighbor as thyself. That's the fulfillment of the law. But yes. first, we have, must realize Christ loved us so that we can love ourselves because he loved us first by dying on the cross. He loved us. We love ourselves. Therefore, we love other people. That's the order it goes in. If it's out of that order, it's not going to work. I tried before. I tried to love people. I tried, It just in my flesh. You can't do it in the flesh. Dwells no good thing. Amen. Dwells no good thing. And the heart is deceitful and wicked above all things. Who could understand it? We can't even trust our own hearts. We have to trust the heart that he replaced our old heart with. We are new creation, so we have to trust that. Whatever he says goes, even if it may hurt us and our own ego and our flesh and our own conscience. So what? We have to go with what he says. And nine out of ten times, we're not going to like it at first. But we have to yield to that. And we love because he first loved us. Amen. We can't love if he didn't first love us. No. So how do we expect people that don't know God to show us the love, love of God? We can't. We have to really be compassionate on very, each other's weaknesses. Very patient. Very patient and compassionate. Long-suffering. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Amen. Thank I you, guys. We love you guys. I feel like I missed a prayer request. Oh, Mary, healing for my lost kids to soften, soften their, their hearts, hearts to, to Jesus. Jesus. Thanks, Eric Dublin. Amen. So are you, Jack. Okay. <laughs> you sure it says Eric Dublin? Okay. No, she was just thanking me. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Healing for my lost kids to soften their hearts. Yes, so thank you, Lord, that you're um, softening Mary's children's hearts to you. And you're breaking off any lukewarmness. You are revealing yourself in a powerful way to her children and Amen. her family. Thank you that she is being raised up and she's a witness to testify of your loving kindness and your graciousness and your goodness. And she is a bearer of good tidings. A messenger of grace, Amen. hopeful yes. in the light of Jesus Christ, and joyful, joyful, just like on a holiday when somebody gives you a gift. She's like this gift that's waiting to be unwrapped before the world. You have gifts on the inside of you, in other words, that God has been preparing and developing and nurturing so that they grow. But in the right time, when you buy somebody a gift for an upcoming holiday, I know not everybody is Christian celebrates Christmas, so that may not be the greatest, yeah, right? Or birthdays, whatever it may it's be. Right, whatever is an example. So when you're waiting for Christmas, if you celebrate Christmas, you buy the gift, but you're waiting for that date 
to give it to the other person and that other person unwraps it and then it's revealed is what's on the inside and you've been prepared all this right. time with the father and he says that your season is coming and it's also now here already where the unwrapping and that you are this gift to the world to reveal Jesus the to love them. love of Christ, amen. Yes. And he's prepared many things for you. Amen. Big things. Big things that if he showed you, it would be a lot too much to handle. So it would be a lot to handle. It would be too much to handle. So, you know, he's not going to withhold any good thing from his children. But if he revealed our entire purpose to us right away, it would be so overwhelming for a lot of us. So. So we see in part, and we only can prophesy in part, because we're on the earth. We see things in little pieces. There's little pieces to the puzzle. But once we're with him face to face, all things will be made known. But that's what he's uh, given me as a message to deliver to you, Mary. You're doing a great thing. You're doing a great work for the kingdom. Can I pray for her real quick? Yeah, right. of course. Mary, I want to say blessings in the name of Jesus Christ and... I want to just ask the Lord right now, Father, just soften her kids' hearts and give her a spirit of discernment and wisdom. Mm -hmm. How to talk to her kids. Don't let her not be overbearing anymore with the word of the Lord because it could be too heavy for children sometimes or too heavy for people that don't know you, Father. So we just pray that she's not so heavy on them anymore and that when she speaks, she just is fast and quick to listen to them and show them the love of a mother and not pushing Jesus Christ because she is so on fire for the Lord and it, it could be intimidating for some people that are not saved mm -hmm. either the devil's within them or if they're children they're innocent they don't know so father we just pray that her children understand her more and that she is more uh, at peace with them and more at ease and she could show them the motherly love um, that she wasn't able to show them before. I just pray, Father, that you give her that and give her that peace and that discernment that she's able to do that and give her, soften the hearts yes. of her children and let her children behold her and look at her and see something different and see the Lord Jesus Christ yes. so they could come to know you, Father. They might be too young to understand, so give them a spirit of discernment and wisdom even at their young ages so that they could come to the knowledge of the truth even yes. as youngsters, even as children and ra be raised up in the ways of the Lord. But let not uh, Mary's spirit she has filled with joy of the Holy Spirit. Let that not be overbearing for her children any longer. And yes. let her be at peace in all of her ways and be patient with her family. And I pray for the patience of the Lord Jesus. He was patient and obedient unto death. So we always pray for that patience. And Mary, I pray that for you yes. right now in the name of Yahweh Shai HaMashiach, the Messiah. Yeah. And I pray that you're always yeah. patient with your family and that your, fa your whole family would come to the knowledge of the truth and that your whole family would be saved in the name of Jesus Christ. These things are possible. I pray that my father on earth comes to the Lord Jesus Christ yes. and comes to the knowledge. Little by little, we plant seeds and someone else waters. So we're yes. planting a seed tonight, a spiritual seed, mm -hmm. and we're laying it out there. And we're trying to water it, but someone else might water it, and the Lord gives the increase. Amen. Amen. Yes. It makes me think of that song. May his favor be upon you mm. in a thousand generations. Let me put it on. And your children. Oh, yeah, it's a great and their song. Their children. Yeah. Their children. It's a good their song. Their children. His favor is his upon His favor. His grace yeah. and favor is upon everybody watching us now in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, guys. In a thousand generations, and your family, your family, Amen. your children. Your Satan, children. Satan wants all of us, but he can't have us if we are in the Father's hand, and we are children of the Most High. Satan could do whatever he wants. 
He's going to send weapons against us. That's why the Bible says no weapon formed against us shall prosper. And we wrestle not against mm -hmm. flesh and blood, but against principalities, yes. powers, rulers of wickedness wow. in heavenly places. They're in the heavens. They rule the earth. God, the Lord, the Most High God put God's little G over all the nations. There are powers that rule the earth that hate us so much. They yes. can't get the salvation that we have. So yes. they look at us, they behold us, and they are jealous, and they are wicked, and they hate us, and they want to destroy us. And guess what? Most of us used to be part of that kingdom. Most of us came from a Jezebelian kingdom, from another kingdom. We came from being under a certain principality when we were in the world, not even knowing it, not even realizing it, dabbling in yes. drugs, sorcery, sex. We, we did rituals that we didn't even realize we were doing, praising Satan. So when the Lord takes us away, the devil's going to come at us like never before. He's going to send weapons, but guess what? They shall not prosper. Yes. No harmful thing shall come nigh thy dwelling, near your house, near your temple. It shall not prosper. It will test us. But it won't prosper. But look at the prophet. Look at the man of God, Job. Look what happened to him. Yes. If you read the story of Job, the devil has to have permission to touch us as children of God. He petitioned and he said, he will take every, I will take everything from Job and he will curse you. And the Lord said, no, he won't. He allowed Satan to take his whole family. Ten of his children got killed. Ten of his children, all his goods, his spoils got spoiled and got taken from him. His wife got killed, taken from him. Wow. He had nothing. You understand? He didn't curse God. Not once. His friends came and, and tried to speak wisdom to him and tried to say that he was a sinner and he sinned. He even said, what what thing did I do without that this wickedness should come upon me? But he never cursed the Lord. And, and the Lord blessed him seven times of what he had before because he stood faithful so bad things will happen in our lives there's a myth that christians have to if you're not there's a myth that a christian cannot get sick a christian cannot have anything bad thing that bad happen to them in their lives that they're going to be perfect no that is a lie it's a lie from hell Things are going to happen in our lives, but the strength and the wisdom and the, and the joy and the love and the peace of the Holy Spirit will keep us yes. and will preserve us and will be able to endure trials. Jesus Christ suffered in this life. He said, ye shall also suffer for my name's sake. They hated me. Yeah. They will hate you. And that's just a part of the suffering, being hated and persecuted. There are other things that happen in life where human beings, things are going to happen. But like I said before, and like Jenny was saying, if we are intimate with the Lord Jesus Christ and we're yielding to his Holy Spirit and we're, we're living the right way by just receiving his grace every day, because it's the grace of God that keeps us because of the faith we have that he gave us as a gift. Yes. Then we will be victorious. We are more than conquerors in Christ Jesus. The devil will not win and he cannot have you or take you. You will have temptation. You will have heartache. You will have strife. You will go through pains in this life. But at the end of every day, you can approach the throne of the Lord Jesus Christ's grace. Mm -hmm. And it will keep us. Thank I told God. you we all love you, brother. God bless. Amen. Thank you, Mary. God bless you too. Because the loving kindness of God will keep us. I know, I read it. I just want to keep flowing, though. Amen, Gary. It's unbelievable, right? The peace that passes all understanding. Amen. That's the peace that you have right now. I haven't felt peace like this in years. I thank God for saving me. I yes. mean, look at the life we were had. We were headed for hell in a handbasket, man. And we didn't even know it. I remember, I have a short testimony to give. You don't mind, Jen. Do you have something to say? If you do, I won't, I won't talk. Thank you, babe. Uh... What I was going to say, she made me forget. See, I look in her eyes and I get lost, man. I can't help it. <laughs> so it's a short testimony I want to give. The only thing that gets me through, keep pushing. Amen, brother. Amen. Ten days in a coma, right? I'm not even going to talk about that. I, I, I went out. I overdosed on drugs. This was about five or six years ago. And I they found me in a Chinese restaurant bathroom. I was there for two hours. I don't... I don't know how I survived. They had a Narcan me four times. I'm not going to tell you about the spiritual experience I had while being unconscious and pretty much dead until they revived me back to life. 
But I woke up and I knew it was the Lord and the EMT lady just lost her brother to an overdose. She was a Christian. And we sat and we held hands and we prayed together and we were both hysterical crying. An angel threw me back in my body. I'm not going to get into that now. It's not about that. I was praising the Lord on the way home. I left the hospital. I ran out of the hospital. I was on the train preaching the gospel when I didn't really even know what the gospel was, saying things that I had no knowledge of, praising the Lord, just giving him glory and praise. People were, were standing in awe, listening to me. This lady on the train, I remember, she was like really into it and she started crying and it was like something glorious was upon me, right? That was the Lord letting me know that he was the Lord because before that I didn't even, I was confused. I was, I didn't know what path to take. I, I knew Jesus kind of, but I was still skeptical. And that was his way of showing me this is me. And, and it was me that saved you all those times. It was me that just saved you now. And the next day, what did I do? I'm giving this example for a reason. The next day I woke up, I had a half a bag of heroin left. I sniffed it. This time I fell out again. They had a Narcan me four times again. And the only reason I got saved, think about this. I'm praising the Lord. I just basically got saved. I just came to the knowledge of Jesus Christ. I'm praising him, preaching the gospel on the train, giving him glory. And the next day I wake up, of course, the flesh, right? The spirit against the flesh, flesh against the spirit. I woke up, I didn't feel good. So I said, I'm just going to do this half a bag. I'll sniff it. I won't shoot it this time. I sniffed it. And as soon as I left the bathroom, the, my roommate at the time, he left when I went into the bathroom. He forgot his coffee mug. If he didn't forget his coffee mug, I would have left the bathroom and collapsed. Nobody would have been in the room. I was in a sober house in bed Brooklyn. So see, I'm going all over the place. Make a long story short, I got saved again, woke up in tears again. But what would possess a man to feel the glory of God and his life getting saved by the Most High? Your life gets saved and preserved and you know it. You have the knowledge of God and then the next day you do the same thing. That's how hard-headed and prideful man is. That is our nature and until... The Holy Spirit takes up full residence in us and we yield to the spirit and not the flesh and we have the spirit of God rule over our body and soul. Until that fully happens, the flesh is going to rise up. Temptations are going to rise up. Old ways are going to rise up. Well, thank you, Tierra. I'm going to give my full testimony soon. I just want it to be all together because sometimes I go all over the place. She gets annoyed. And then, you know, people can't... <laughs> People can't really keep up, you know what I mean? So sometimes I do that. I want to write everything down um, and do a full testimony, you know, because it's going to be pretty long from, you know, my childhood up until now. That was just a short little, you know, story tidbit. Only Jesus, brother. It's all, He's doing that to a drug addicts now, to pimps, prostitutes, drug addicts, hustlers, all these people that came from the lives we came from. Yeah. He's saving them in miraculous ways and raising them up. And we're the boldest people because we came yes. from the dirtiest of the dirtiest lifestyles. Yes. So now that we're saved and, and, and we know that Jesus Christ is our Lord, we're going to tell everybody. Yep. We're going to scream, cry aloud, and spare not. Mm -hmm. And we're going to be bold and we'll walk through the mud and the dirt with you yes. to preach the gospel. And we plan on doing it and we're going to do it. Not because of our power, but because of the power of the Lord and the power of the Holy Spirit. And we all should have that boldness because look at what he took us out of. Yes. We don't deserve to be alive. It's by his what? Grace. Lift up your voice like a trumpet. Amen. It's by his grace. Only by his grace. Unbelievable. Praise God. Praise, Praise God. He's faithful. Thank you, Gary. Thank you, Gary. Yeah. He already has been. He already has been. It's within. Amen. It really is. Yeah, I mean, I hope this blessed you guys tonight. I hope it. I hope it did. You have more? Uh, a little bit. I think. <laughs> I think we should call. I think he has like now. twenty-four hours left in him for this video, guys. So just bear with us. You know what I mean? Like we chilled. We'll get a coffee no, in the 12, morning. It's twelve o'clock. No, we gotta go. We gotta we'll go just now. do an all nighter one night. How about that? Hey, Amen. Thank you guys for hanging in there. We love you guys, and please keep in touch with us, Jaleel. Call me tomorrow, okay? Tomorrow we'll talk. I could sit down and talk to you tomorrow.
No, for no. real. Do you really have more? I don't mind. Like, wait. No, I think we should cut okay. it short. I think we should cut it short. Babe. You sure? Yeah. Whatever you want to do. I think we should cut it short. Whatever I think the mess. I think the message was conveyed. I think we prayed for people, and I think people. Hopefully, God willing, are encouraged by this. Um, you know, we've been at this probably since, what, 6.30. We went to church. Mm-hmm. Seven hours is pretty good. It's like a work day, right? Yeah, but maybe one day <laughs> we'll, just do an all, we'll just pull an all-nighter hey, prayer meeting that's on gonna here. That's going to be we'll my life. I could, go, I could really knows? go till 5 Never o'clock know. in the morning. Me too. I that's really why could. God put us together. <laughs> yeah, I really could. I really could. I didn't even eat anything, which is good. Sometimes you want to just feed off the word and and Amen. not eat anything before you do a video or do something because let the word fill you up and let that come in and receive and then pour out of it. You know, bless you, bless you, hallelujah, bless you guys. And uh, I want to hear you guys' testimony too. <laughs> we'll be on soon again. We'll be on soon again. I, we got I, a lot I, to pour out. We got a lot of stuff, and, and you know what? It's the Holy Spirit, and I I want you guys to share your testimony too about certain things and maybe you know in the future we could have somebody on video and do that and Mm -hmm. you know who knows what the future holds but um, yes we have to have joint videos joint right right i I thought i think stacy or somebody wanted to come on but Mm -hmm. it wasn't the time now when when it's the time we're gonna we're gonna do things like that yeah definitely god bless you um tim we love you guys and stay posted. There's much more to come and the, there's a Holy Spirit outpouring. Yeah. And I mean, if you really tune into it and you just draw from that well, he just keeps on giving. giving. It's Wave the gift glory. that keeps on giving. Wave of glory. And you know what? After, after receiving or after pouring out on a video or whatever you're doing, uh, feeding on the word of God in your home and praying... We have to keep that mentality after that. It's not just that and then we receive and then, you know, that's why the Bible says don't cast your pearls before swine. Don't, 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 don't speak the gems and the treasures of the scriptures to people that are just going to uh, eat it and then, and then let it process and go out. We have to let this plant seeds in us that could grow and that could actually um manifest trees of, of of light trees of the gospel trees of the word of god trees of fruits trees that bear fruit is what i'm trying to say i, I said a million other words i'm a little mm-hmm. tired we need to, to let the seeds be planted in us and grow trees that bear good fruits and that's what you know a man or a woman by is by their fruit you shall know them yes. by their fruits and fruits don't mean you're rich and have a lot of money fruits don't mean um, that you have a nice car. Fruits don't mean that you have manners once in a while. Fruits, spiritual fruits, spiritual gifts, the way you love, the way you have empathy on people. Yes, those other things will be added. Those, And I'm sure of it, they will be. You know, uh, God took me from the streets. Um, I shouldn't even be alive right now, let alone have a roof over my head. But the Lord provides. In your time of need, call out to the Lord Amen. and be patient. Because God's time is not our time. His ways are not our ways. So we have to be patient also. And patience is indeed also a gift. And we're going to do a video one day about the spiritual gifts. Spiritual gifts. Yeah. We went over. Offices. We went over, well, not formally, but we brushed on identity. Yeah. Identity, authority, power, dominion, territories, spiritual gifts. And whatever else. There's a lot to oh, go there's over. A lot. We have to just organize it all, but we never do. And then it's always spontaneous. It's all well, right. actually, by, we did. We it's have by some... the Holy Spirit. It's better than, you know what? A lot of old school preachers used to do that. They used to yeah. get up in a pulpit and they didn't write anything. Yeah. They just opened the scriptures and whatever the Spirit Amen. spoke. He spoke. You know, they spoke. Uh, man or woman, whatever. That's what we, I think that's what God is doing too. But there yeah. are certain subjects that you have to put things together to cover because it's a lot of stuff. And we're yes. still learning as we go too by the Holy Spirit. And that's why we're taking things very slow. And, you know, I'm not, I'm not out there, you know, God, uh, webcam, I used it. Yeah, that would be great in the future. His timing, his timing and his plan. Amen. Amen. Yeah, it's good to take things slow, and he doesn't always want us to come out with a binder of information, right. but it's good sometimes to set a little bit of study time aside. But Absolutely. In these last days, 
so many people are just really on the move and on the go. So sometimes it's just easier to go spontaneous with it. Yeah. And he gets his message across, whatever oh, it yeah. may be. He oh, always yeah. has a way of doing it. And a so lot of times we don't even remember what we, it, it's serious. The Holy Spirit takes over. Yeah. And, you, you know, <laughs> I don't even watch. I never watch my videos. I never go back and analyze. I might watch a little bit of the beginning, but I never sit there and watch my videos. I really don't care as long as the Holy Spirit spoke and we, we were encouraging, but at the same time, speaking the truth in love, as harsh as it may be, or as, as weird as it may seem, people need to hear the truth and the love and grace of God. And yes, yes he will always provide. Amen. Amen. He will always provide. We love you guys. Love Thank you guys. you guys. It's a little after midnight. We break the witch hour in the name of Jesus Christ. This is the saints hour. This is the hour of the Lord Jesus. This is yes. the hour of the Holy Spirit. 12 a.m. to 3 a.m. is the hour of the Lord Jesus Christ and his church and his body and his saints. And we are taking it over. And everybody that is watching this video that we pray for, everybody watching now and that watched before will be blessed tonight and have sweet sleep, I pray, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And everybody that got encouraged and blessed tomorrow will wake up with a refreshment and a new, brand new, fresh revelation yes, Lord. of the Lord Jesus and a peace that passes all understanding. And I pray for blessings and peace upon everyone that beheld us tonight and watched us and hung in there. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, Yahweh Shad, Son, the Messiah. Amen. Amen. And if somebody or some people are jumping on here later in the video, feel free to go back to the beginning and watch yes. a replay of it. And if there's somebody that God's put on your heart or that you know that you feel like you want to share it to their page, to help minister to them, not to get us out there, but to get him out there. He paid right. a price right. and he's coming soon. So we want to reach as many people with the gospel mm -hmm. while we can. It's all about the Lord. While we can and yeah. work while it is day because the night's coming when no oh, man can Lord. work. So now's the hour of our freedom. We have to really run with it, not take it for granted and do as much damage to the enemy's kingdom and the enemy's camp as possible because he's come to steal kill and destroy from our lives but jesus came to give us life in abundance Abundant. and let him who steals steal no more and all those years that the locust has stolen god is restoring this season so stay firm stay planted in his house in the courts of our god god we shall flourish for those that are planted in the house and the courts of our lord Amen. so stay Hallelujah. blossoming we love you all stay growing stay planted <laughs> in the name of jesus christ the messiah peace and blessings brothers and sisters <laughs>